We have an unusually large studio audience, I think because word got out to film students that, that some of them are cutting classes to be here today, so we, we won't show you on camera and keep you out of trouble. My guest tonight is the French filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard, and he uh, is invariably called an enfant terrible, a genius of film. And in his picture, Breathless, they always say that it changed the grammar of films. Critics always say that. What they seem to mean by that is that uh, he broke all the accepted rules of movie making. He, shots didn't match. Film had uh, what are known as jump cuts. There would be fragmented dialogue, uh, shots taken with a handheld camera that moved occasionally. Um, and yet the result was a, a very moving experience for moviegoers, filmgoers and I guess a milepost in the technique of filmmaking, the art of filmmaking. The, that year was uh, 1959. Since then, Godard has ha had a prodigious outpouring of unusual, outstanding movies. His new film this year is called Every Man for Himself, and it's still another movie, uh, different from any of his other films, and shows the rapid turnover of style which his fans come, have come really to associate with. The, uh, methods of communication of my guest. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome, please, uh, a brilliant filmmaker, Jean-Luc Godard. Mr. So Godard, the, the, um, the word comeback has been used about this this film. I, by that, I guess I mean it may be the first, what you might call, commercial feature that you've done in some time. Does that word come back offend you or in any way? Well, in you see it that way? In a sense, because I, I never went away. <laughs> Maybe I was pushed away, and uh, to me, I'd yeah. rather say what the reverse of come back. Well, what is it? Come forth? Or I, go I, forth? Or continue? Or con well, just, con just continue going on, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it isn't, it isn't in yeah. your sense, a, a, no. a return no. to something. Uh, the, the, the critics, have, in, in talking about this, what I've read of, of the current film, uh, see it as full of despair. It's a word that's come up in four out of five reviews. Pessimism. Do you see that? Oh, whose critic were they? I, I think, were they men or women? Ah. <laughs> I never notice when I read. Uh, uh, I <laughs> I think they were mainly men because they identify. Well, there is two girls, mainly two male, yeah. two female characters, and one male character. And I think the men identify more with the men, and uh, because of that, they say it's full of despair. And uh, but since there is a, a majority of the two women, which are absolutely no, there is no despair in their moods, and I think it's unfair to the movie. Mm -hmm. But I may find an explanation. It's because there is. The, for, for the character and for myself as a director of the movie, there was no complain, feeling of complaining about something. Mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, it was not of, to complain about something, the world, the business, the money, the war in the uh, Middle East, uh, anything. Yeah. There was no complaint in this movie. And because of that, you see real motivation without nothing surrounding it. I mean, motivations in reality. And maybe it's tough to see because you are not used to, to see that. And so you think there must be some despair or something just because it's tough. Because but the characters aren't complaining, they must have given up. Uh, yeah, no, uh, they're just coping with, it's just coping with reality, but no complaining about nothing. There is a feeling, it's interesting that you said were they men or women, the critics. The women in the film, um, at which I saw, seem to, um, <clears throat> cope, to use your word, better than the men. The men, certainly. Uh, the, the prostitute well, is they, resigned to what she does, or she's uh, um, distanced from it in some I mean, way. it's she's hard work, like any kind of work today. Mm -hmm. I mean, even having uh, just a small conversation a piece about a movie uh, with such light and such ceremony, I mean, it's kind of hard. Uh, it's difficult to be casual and normal, yeah. and uh, TV is hard, uh, I don't know for the audience, but uh, mm -hmm. so the girls are more casual, yes, and I think women are more natural today than men. More, more natural? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better adjusted, uh, able to endure life better? I think they have better ideas. 
Do you, uh... What, what do they mean when they say you, you seem more sympathetic to the women in the films? No, not that. I mean, uh, uh, the, the male character is my name, and his first name, Paul, uh, is my father's name. Mm -hmm. But I don't well, I identify a bit with it, and he's a TV pro character, he's a TV producer, I'm a movie producer, so... But I think it's more like a social status. So it was honest for me to to give my name in some place of the movie, whether an hotel or whether a character, or whether a car, I don't know. Yeah. But the moves and the motivation of the two women, which were two different kind of moves, or maybe the same moves, but two different kind of speed. And the problem with the man, he has no speed. One of the women is going too fast, the other one is going too slow, and the man is just not moving. And, yes. and then uh, maybe this is the despair. Uh -huh. But they, there is direction with the two other ones. And it's more, and to me, there is more autobiography, you, you say, mm -hmm. in the two women character. I never hesitate in none of my movies, even in the first one with Jean Seberg. She was an American girl. I, I gave her my lines. And very often I have problem with the actor because th they are obliged to say my lines, not Shakespeare line, not uh, mm -hmm. an objective line, but my lines. And very often, because it is woman, they object because they feel... Uh, but I, I, I think I'm just giving the lines to the actor when I think it's right, whether it is a man and a, uh. or, or, or a woman. What do you do with the actress who says, but a woman wouldn't say that? S well, now I think maybe if we have a good a good relationship, maybe a difficult one, but a good, maybe I listen a little more, and I, mm -hmm. maybe I think that my lines are not so good, but maybe there is good enough, and, well, let's work, let's work, uh, let's work it uh, more, let's study it, and maybe we'll, disco we'll discover something. So you're not the sort of director who would say, this woman would say it, or no. wash up no. and get No, for example, out. I always try that, at least, for example, in, uh, I, I wanted, I want it because in, in the call girl uh, business, very often the girl names are not there. They are afraid to give their real names. Mm -hmm. So I ask Isabel, uh, do, you, do you accept to give your real names, if, uh, first name Isabel? And the way she's saying it, because it's a real name, we understand it's a real name. She's not uh, like the other girl saying, my name yeah, is Marilyn or... Natasha or Claudia, you know, those kind of fancy names. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shawanda. Yeah. 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 I mean. <laughs>